Hello and welcome back to the shop. So my original plan was to get this lathe level and to do the rest of the work that needed to be done on for the lathe on the lathe or most of it on the, on the 13. Um, I got it level and I was doing some test cuts, doing you know the twin collar test with just a little piece held in the chuck, skim two collars and check the diameters of them. And I was just getting way funky readings. And I really don't trust the three jaw chuck that had that I had with this lathe. Um, I do have a four jaw that's going to live on that, but I need to make a back plate for it, and I got to order some stock for that. So uh, what I ended up doing is I just broke down and order, ended up ordering a test bar uh, instead of using the twin collar test. We can use the test bar to align the lathe and get it level and everything else, uh, and that hasn't shown up yet. So today what we're going to do is we're going to work on repairing the tail stock. So that way there we have a nice uh, surface, a nice tailstock to, to align to. Um, once we get the lathe level, I can go ahead and use a test bar to align the tailstock. Now, the screw that was in the tailstock is pretty worn, and so are the threads in the ram itself. And uh, you can see here, we kind of got the hot dog dude down the hallway fit there. So the actual uh, casting of the tailstock itself where the ram rides isn't too worn. I mean it does have some wear but it's not that bad at all. It's maybe slightly worse than my 9 inch but not nearly as bad considering the wear on this screw. So um, we don't have to play with that at all but what I do want to do is get this a lot better so uh, it can be a little bit more tight and, and you know a lot less play in it when we go to align the tailstock. And the way we're going to do that is we are going to take this, which is an Acme threaded nut. You can buy these. I got this from McMaster Car. They come in uh, all different kinds of steels. Um, this is a cast iron one. You can get a brass one for like, I don't know, I think it was like eight or nine bucks for the brass one. The cast iron one here, this was a lot more expensive. This is around 25 bucks. But a lot better than brass. So all we need to really do is set this up in the four jaw chuck and I want to take a quick skim cut off the face of the front of this. You can see it's you know got all uh, ding marks there from somebody hitting hitting it with a hammer probably and I'm gonna take a quick face cut off of that I'm gonna flip it around and then we're gonna go ahead and bore the threads out of this and we're gonna make a bore diameter up to one inch then we're going to go ahead and cut this down to one inch and we're going to basically press that in place and hold it in place with some Loctite or maybe heat it up and press fit it. Um, it I don't think it's going to really make a difference because in all honesty all the pressure is going to be against the flat surface in here, our, our lip in here when we go to actually put force on it and drill and there's really not much force pulling out. So I think we'll be fine with Loctite and it's a lot easier. Uh, getting that to fit than it would be to try to get you know down to uh, uh, a actual measurable press fit. So I think um, the red Loctite and everything will be fine for that. Hell, there's red Loctite holding my cross slide together on my uh, on my nine inch, and that's been that way for uh, about three years, and it's been fine. So I think we'll get away with that. Now we're also going to remake the screw here, and I was thinking of just remaking the whole thing, but actually. This section here, even though it does have a few little pecker marks there, you see little pecker tracks there from somebody grabbing it with a wrench, those are subsurface, all right? There's no raised area there, and the diameter of this fits extremely well in the end of the tailstock. There's no appreciable wobble there. So I think we're just going to save this piece. Even though the keyway is a little bit wallowed out, I think we can still get away with that and just get an oversized key in there. Or even, I can probably even just braze that and remachine it. That's not a big thing. So what we're going to do, just to make our lives easier, is cut the shaft right here. And I have a piece of Acme threaded rod. We'll cut this down. We'll drill and ream this for a nominal size. And then we'll just cut this down to the same size. And uh, we'll Loctite that sucker in place. And then we'll call it a day with that. And we have a brand new screw with a brand new nut. So why don't we get on the 9 there and we'll get this in the 4 jaw and dialed in and make a quick face cut on that edge. Okay, so we got the tailstock ram in the 4 jaw chuck 
and obviously my spindle through hole isn't uh, big enough to fit this. This is inch and a half. I only have a three quarter inch spindle through hole. So we're hanging out pretty far, but we're just going to be taking a light cut on this face so we don't really need anything to support it. Um, all we're going to do is get this I'm going to get this dialed in and just be aware that we do have a um, keyway here to deal with. So what we're going to do is we're going to find our, without falling into the keyway that I just warned you about, we're going to find our lowest point, which looks like it's going to be right there. I'm going to set zero. And we're going to find our highest point which is there, which is 22, so we're going to move, we're going to half that, so we're going to move to 11, which is there, we're going to set 0 on our indicator, and we're going to come around to our next jaw, and we're going to bring that reading to 0, so we're low, so that means that it has to come towards me, Okay, and we're going to come to our next jaw. I'm going to bring that reading to zero. Now we should be pretty damn close. So just by doing that, we're within five. So now you can do it like normal. So there's my high. There's my low. see if I can get it to a better running place right here. So we look like we're within two and we, you know, we're hopping around a little bit because we have some some marks on this tailstock here. So let me zero it out again so you guys can see. So minus one, plus one. So we're within two or three. So there's, well, so let me see if I can get a little bit more out of that. So that's pretty good there. Alright, I'm going to call that zero. And then I'm just going to take a quick little skim cut there. And that will just get all these little ugly marks out of there. You can see the scale doesn't start until here. And I have plenty of room on that Morse taper which goes back to about here. So worst case scenario, there will just be like a smidgen more out there. I do want to get a Morse taper reamer and just make sure that this is nice and clean. I mean the tool has spun in this before which is, you know, not surprising. Okay, so we're just going to take a quick skim cut across that. Okay, now we're not taking off much at all. I just, just enough to clean that up. the uglies out of there. Maybe just a little bit more.
There we go. That's good. Like that. Now we'll just break that edge. There we go. Alright, so now I'm going to flip it around, re-indicate it, and we'll get ready to bore out uh, where those threads are. Okay, so we have this all set up. I made a, uh, a pass in there, make sure I had clearance, and I just got the, um, the threads out of there. So now we're just going to bring this out to one inch. And right now we're at 650 thousandths. So let's go. I'm going to take probably, I'll we'll try I'll try 50. Let's see how that works. And I have a dial indicator set up here. We want to go into a depth of 250, uh, one inch, 250 thousandths rather. So let's get going. Okay. is a depth without, that I can get without chattering, so we're just going to keep going at that until we get close. Okay, right now I am getting within 1,000. Um, this is still pretty hot, so I'm going to let this cool down, and then I'll double check it. And uh, even if I'm a little bit off, I can just make uh, cut the plug to fit, so that's not a huge thing. So right now I'm 1,000th over. Um, what I want to do right now is I'm just going to come in here to my depth. Flatten that shoulder out, and then also what we're going to do is take this, and we'll just nick that edge. that edge and I'll let this cool down and then I'll recheck it. 
Okay, well we shrunk down by about a half thousandth, which really isn't a big thing. Like I said, it can make the other the nut to match. But you can see there's our bore, and there's our shoulder down there. Plenty of meat. And, uh, I don't know if the light will catch it, but that's what the Morse taper socket there kind of looks like, which is why I want to run a, uh, see if I can borrow a, a, uh, taper reamer and just see if I can clean that up just a hair. But, now, we're just going to set up our nut, and, uh, we're going to take some cuts off of this. So I'm going to have to do it in two passes, so I'm going to have to grab it, do it, flip it, and then hit the other side. So, I'm just going to throw this in the forge out chuck and indicate it in, and then we can start trimming it. Okay, so we got, um, about 250,000 to come off of this. I zeroed or I, I indicated the outside here, we're within half a thou, and then on the front, we're probably within about three quarter, more than enough for what we need. So we just got to take 250 thousandths off of this, and then uh, flip it around, and then meet up with our cut. So let's start doing that. I think I'm going to slow this lathe down one speed here, see how this goes. We'll start here, and then you know work our way around speeds and feeds, and see what is optimal. We put the bowl gear pin back in. So there's a touch. And we're going to take, let's try 50,000, see what happens. Right now we're uh, 11 thousandths over, so this is still pretty warm. I'm going to let this cool down, I'll take another measurement, and then we'll take our final pass. Three. So this should pretty much just be a nice snug fit in here. Ah, and it is. Alright, so let's get the other side. Okay, so I got this re-zeroed in. All I'm going to do is take this other side down to the same diameter. We'll skip that for you guys. And then we'll be back when I'm done. Okay, so we're uh, pressed in and Loctited on this. You can see we're slightly proud. I'm going to face that once that Loctite dries. Right now we're just going to get our, our uh, Acme rod here set up in the chuck. And I want to take this down to 3 eighths of an inch because that's the reamer that I'm going to use to ream out the, uh, the handle. So the 3 eighths of an inch by about an inch, inch and a half, uh, you know, should give us plenty of meat to be able to get into the handle. Um, you can see here. So if I go about, you know, an inch or so into that, there should be plenty of, uh, of grip on the actual handle pot. So right now I got I have a flat uh, little tip on there to be able to span that so right now looks 
It's like there's my lowest point. Or 120. So half of 120 is 60. I'm going to zero our dial. We're going to go to our next set of jaws there. Zero, go to the next set. Bring that to zero, and you can see by one move, right now we're within four. So there's my low, there's my high. Got a little bit of a jump right there, but. That's my high. So we're within about one before we hit that little jump. So I'm going to turn this down to three eighths of an inch. shy of an inch and a quarter. Right there is one three hundred, that's plenty. What I do want to do is I'm going to get a center in this that's just a little too far out. Okay, 375 all the way through. So I'm going to wait to cut this to length. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get this handle or this screw here. We'll get this in place and we'll go ahead and cut off the screw portion and then we can drill and ream for this. So I can indicate off of this collar, get it in the four jaw chuck.
Okay, so I'm zeroed in on this collar, and you can see how out of everything that screw is. So we're going to cut it right here. I'm just going to take a hacksaw uh, and just cut this off, and then um, we can face this, take a light facing cut, and then drill and ream that. Okay, got a pilot hole. Drill. That drill's leading something fierce. Uh, let me see if I can get a better one. All right, this drill should be a little bit better. Yep. that I want. Alright, we got a 3 8 ream in there. We're going to run that through. And we're just going to give this a quick little chamfer on the outside edge there. And there we go. So now I can make the two pieces. Uh, what I want to do first though is I am going to take the piece that we cut off, I'm going to measure it, and then I'm going to cut off the other end of this to match and uh, I'll, I'll probably I'll just throw it in there in the lathe real quick and then just chamfer the edge so um, you'll skip that for you guys and let me go do that and then we can mate these up and we should be pretty much done okay so here's the screw in place like I said just uh, a little bit of um, Loctite in there holding that sucker in place and I just quickly faced the rear end of the uh, the ram here <coughs> Like I say, I still want to really want to run a reamer down the end of this, but let's get this sucker together. So this fits into here, and you know I got a little bit of side to side movement, just like my nine. Not not too bad. Uh, worst case scenario, you, I mean you can replace the uh, the key in here a little bit. As far as side to side movement, up and down, not too much going on there. This 
fits right in there because we didn't modify anything. So now, we just the only the other thing I did too is I put in some little oilers on the top where they were just holes. Those are uh, little spring oilers. So this here is going to fit in the back like so. And I have my hand wheel over here. I'm not going to put the key in yet. What I'll probably do with the key is uh, just re-drill it 90 degrees from, or 180 degrees from where it is now. Not a huge thing. Just hand tight that thing. And no real in and out movement. And there it is there. Let me just tighten down this Allen screw here. Okay, let me grab a, uh, alrighty. So, we're in there nice. And let's see if we eject. Right there, I'm hitting, and I ejected. And that's a tangless, um, shaft there. So, we're good to go. I'm happy with that repair. Definitely a lot less movement in this. And uh, should serve me for a long time now. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, pretty simple repair. We were able to keep most of the machining down to a minimum uh, on this shaft here. Well, we were able to keep the original pieces and then just add the screw to it. Basically the same idea as this is what is going to happen to the uh, cross feed on this lathe. Um, I should have hopefully that uh, test bar should be coming beginning of next week so hopefully by next weekend I should be able to level this thing and actually make some cuts on it. Uh, I have made a, some cuts on it. Everything works fine. Everything does it. It's just a matter of uh, how accurate I can actually get this thing with the wear that it has. Um, wear is something that you can work around this has more wear than the nine inch but this is also a lot more capable uh lathe than the nine inch so we'll be keeping both of them um maybe one day we'll come across a 16 and we'll get rid of this and upgrade who knows uh but in the meantime hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you on the next one